My name's Caroline Daffodil. I'm 54 and have ridden since I was nine. Three years ago, we removed, moved to our farm, Magic's Autumn, in a remote past of the Eastern Cape in South Africa. It's an idyllic place for horses, huge paddocks, and I've got a dressage arena and my show jumping arena, even a place for Ori to roll. Ori is my ten-year-old warm blood gelding, who I've been competing in both elementary and medium level. However, there has been a problem. I live 200 kilometres away from the nearest dressage instruction and 1,000 kilometres away from any good instructors. To add to our difficulties, Ori is not always a good boy. In competition, he's been eliminated for dangerous behaviour. And as a rider, I have sometimes reached the end of my tether. And we have become involved in fights of which I am not proud at all. While Ori is the main man, I also have Ari. She's an eight-year-old warm blood mare, and she's working at training level. Unfortunately, she's a bit like a bag of rocks to ride. She's terribly uncomfortable, and I haven't, just haven't connected with her. I'd almost decided to give up on her and send her back to the stud farm. To say I was feeling frustrated, dejected, and lonely in my dressage endeavour was to put it mildly. But ta-da-da-da, help was at hand. Shanna and Thomas Ritter of Dr Ritter Dressage were running a Facebook course. And we are live! <laughs> I am Thomas Ritter. <laughs> I'm Shanna Ritter. So, we are going to talk, like we had announced a couple of days ago, about the uh, uh, questions, what do I do with a horse, how do I do it, why do I do it. You don't know what to do with it? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> do you need me to help you? I was so excited when the What, Why, How course was announced that I was probably the first to enroll. Notwithstanding that, I had a few reservations. It was incredibly expensive for me as a South African, but in retrospect, the money was well spent. A second reservation was that in order to gain the most out of the course, I felt I would need to post videos of my work with my horses, both good and bad. The dressage fraternity is not forgiving of bad work shown in public forums. I was nervous about this. I need not have been. Shanna created an incredibly safe environment in the Facebook page in which these videos were posted. Negativity was not tolerated and criticism was only encouraged from, the, from Shanna, Thomas and the teaching staff, Kristen and Marcel. Over and above the incredible knowledge I gained from this course, I also gained a number of friends through this Facebook page. An enormous amount of information was made available to us through the course. This was done by the Facebook page, by the course videos and notes, and also by the weekly Q&A sessions. Over and above this, Thomas did commentaries on our own personal videos. The following commentary is of me and Ari quite early in the course. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting horse, right, and Carolyn has reported that it's one of the most uncomfortable horses she's ever ridden and it's been a real challenge. So what I notice here is that the hind legs don't move totally evenly, right? Yeah, you and can see uh, it with the head movement. Yeah. It comes out as this head movement. Yeah. And uh, That comes from the hind legs. Yeah. An exactly. attractive horse though, yeah, you can see he has a very good. tight muscle tone. Yeah. He probably yeah. feels like, um, yeah, like riding a b bag of rocks. Yeah, the <coughs> hand looks stay <coughs> fairly straight they don't flex very easily, <coughs> which you know makes it un uncomfortable. And it seems like um... this piece of video is of Ari some weeks after the course. You can see I'm messing around a little bit here. What I'm trying to do is get our hind legs under the body and get her to flex them before we go into the upward transition. And you see, we get a much softer transition. She doesn't try and throw her head up as she used to, and now the hind quarters are flexing under her. It may not look that different, but it certainly feels very different. This has been one of the biggest takeaways for me from this course is it's more important to actually soften the hindquarters than to soften the pole and the neck. This has been a real game changer for Ari. Maybe she won't go to the stud farm at all, after all. 
She may not, of course, be so happy about that. This is a video of Ori some weeks after the course. I've included it because it represents a second big takeaway for, from the course for me. Thomas's approach to problem solving and hitting difficulties with your horses was quite novel to me. He said when a horse resists or says no, it doesn't necessarily mean you've done something wrong or even that the horse is doing something wrong. It means you're doing something he's finding difficult and you both need to probably work in that area. In the past, I might have got angry with Ori when this happened, but now I understand that actually he's finding this quite difficult and he's working quite hard. So I send him off into a slightly easier option, but he still has to work quite hard. Another interesting thing Thomas says is that when you do an exercise, it's not necessarily how well you do the exercise, but how well the horse goes afterwards. Does his movement improve? Does the contact improve? Does he feel better? And here again, I ask him for the shortening again, but from another angle. He still finds it difficult, but perhaps more acceptable, and I only ask him for a very few steps. These new approaches and philosophies have been so successful, successful that Ori has become much more of a pleasure to ride. We've even had some competitive success. In South Africa, we've won and come second in a few elementary classes with scores of over 65 and one of over 70. We've also competed in one dressage anywhere class in medium where we came second with a score of 64. I loved the what, why and how course. I loved it while I was doing it. I found it very exciting. I loved being able to talk to other people about these ideas, about these theoretical ideas of how, why and what a horse should be doing. I've even found subsequent to the course, I'm still learning. I'm still learning from things that were said, ideas people have thrown around. I enjoyed the course so much that I did the canter intensive on Ari. And now I'm simply waiting for the flying changes course. I will, however, be bringing my two young off the track thoroughbreds onto the next what, why and how course. The lovely thing about this course is it's not breed specific. Thomas has solutions for warm blood thoroughbreds, uh, Halflingers, quarter horses, Lusitanos, you name it, he actually deals with the horse for who and what he is. This is actually not that common in the dressage fraternity. Most dressage instructors have a strong preference for a particular breed or type. A piece of advice I would give to anyone considering doing this course, and I would have told myself before I started it was get a good vi video camera that you can video yourself with and buy lots and lots of cones.